Live from Bordeaux Field on the campus of Turner's Falls High School, this is Franklin County Bulldog football. The Franklin County Bulldogs, the Frontier Peewees and Juniors, and a double here to header here from rarely used Bordeaux Field. I'm Chris Collins along with Bobby C. Alan Beckel and Megan Selfer here, and we have uh, a couple of good football games here, Bob, involving what could be the future of a lot of programs, football programs, high school football programs in Franklin County. Well, the one thing that we have to say about something like this is that we get a chance to be able to see younger kids learn the game of football. Also, it's great because they got a lot of coaches that are dedicating their time. Of course, the cheerleaders are down there. They put in the same work ethic as these players do, as they have their practice time as well. And it's nice to be able to be out on a beautiful Sunday where these kids are able to showcase what they've learned so far in the young season, as this is only week number two, Chris. One of the issues in high school ranks has been numbers. And I'll tell you, no problem with numbers in these programs. There's lots of kids in the Pee Wee and the junior levels that are here to play football today. Well, the one thing that we have to remember is, is that the kids are learning at this level, but what you're hoping for is that they really continue to love the game of football as they get older and they want to play high school football. As we know, big changes have happened here on the level of varsity football here in our area, where now Turner's and Mohawk are a combined program, and with 159 new freshmen now going into the Franklin County Tech School, you're going to see big numbers over at the Tech School now, Chris, and you're going to see smaller numbers at the these other schools because they're really taking those kids away from these other school districts. And the concern is that going forward you're going to see fewer and fewer kids coming out and you're going to see more and more programs at the co-op or fold. To see this number of kids out here at this level playing and learning is a good thing. I think it's a good thing for the future of uh, high school football in Franklin County which is still very much steeped in tradition and something that a lot of these communities identify with. That's the other part of of you know, losing a program as a story program as Turner's Falls High School is, it's so important to the people in this community to be able to have a Turner's Falls program. And now they're up at Bohawk playing a co-op program and hopefully at some point that program will be resurrected. Well, the one thing that we can say is, is that everybody's been talking about the numbers at the Franklin County Tech School having the most players of all of our schools here in Franklin County. Well, guess what? The two co-op schools got together against the Franklin County Tech this past week and the Franklin County Tech got beat on the road up at Mohawk and the final was 15 to 12, uh, 13. Yeah, that so was 15, 13 game. That was a bit of a surprise. A lot of people I think figure Tech is gonna go deep. I think a lot of people figure Frontier is gonna go deep this year as well. And this Frontier Red Hawks junior team is also uh, got a lot of names on it. The Pee Wees and the juniors both. And that, there's no, no drop off of numbers in the Frontier program this year. And um, so a lot of these young kids from the South County are uh, you're going to see these kids playing against each other hopefully a lot over the next several years. Well, the one thing that we could say about Frontier is they're really not hurting with numbers. No. They've always done well in every sport, Chris. You know, when you think about sports at any high school here in the Valley, you'd have to really mention Frontier as one of the schools that definitely has premier athletes. And it's not just in one or two sports, Chris. It's in many sports. And you know, as covering a lot of athletics here on the FCAT, that definitely you have seen many talented programs over the years just in the time that you've been with them. Yes. Frontier will receive to start this game. They're going to kick the ball off from the 50. Now, it's important to note that these Pee Wee games are played on an 80-yard field, so it's not quite as big as the regulation football field, but that's, a, you know, these are small kids, and the key is to get them to learn the game, and you don't have to play in a 100-yard field to learn the football game. The other nice thing, too, is they have the kids kick off at the 50, at this level, so it gives the kids a chance to be able to get decent field position as well. And also the coaches are able to be on the field to help coach the kids as well. We're gonna do our best to bring you the names and numbers. It's gonna be difficult because it's our sight line up here is it's very tough to read these numbers in these small shirts, but we'll see what happens. Kickoff goes and is picked up at about the 30 yard line. Run back up the right sideline and I think he's gonna take it all the way. Well, that's one way to start a football game. There touchdown. It is. Touchdown. Ty Strosky. Ty Strosky, number 12 for the Frontier Pee Wees, makes it 6 0 on what looks to be, Bob, about a 60 yard run back. Yeah. Got a little feedback going on here. So it's not us, though. 
six nothing Bulldogs on the opening play of this game. Uh, six nothing Frontier. Sorry, Frontier. I'm oh, sorry, Frontier. Yep. Frontier, Frontier Red Hawks. Yeah. So they end up with uh, a nice opportunity right there to be able to score. And uh, now they'll uh, go for the. It's like a two-point two -point conversion. Yep. Yep. The day that we get a Pee Wee's kid that kicks field goals is the day that it's going to be an exciting day here in Franklin County. Yes, it will be. And that may happen <laughs> at some point. You never know. That would be pretty cool. Look how big that center is for Frontier. Yeah. That kid is a monster. We're going to line it up and go for a two-point conversion here. Double wing offense. And it's going to be an inside handoff, and no good. No so good. the conversion fails. We'll come back up the field with the score. Frontier 6, Franklin County nothing. This is Pee Wee Football on Frontier Community Access Television. So what happens, Chris, is they automatically go right into the ball being at the 35-yard line. Right. Um, I guess the kickoff is just probably to start the game, start the probably game. The, the, the second half, and that's pretty much it. So, and then, so yeah. Franklin County will start right at their 35. And what's great about this is the coaches are out there as well. So yeah. it's a constant learning situation. It's not how it's competitive, but it's not like that's all it's about. It's about coaching. That's right. And then if there's a play like that last play where the kid took the sidelines, that you talk to those guys that are out on the wing, and you got to let those guys at the edge know that they need to be able to contain the outside. Set up what looks like an offset eye formation by the Bulldogs. And it looks like a good penetration by Frontier and a sack. Wow, great job right there. Led by number 54 of the Red Hawks. He was right in there. That's Jaden LaPointe. Well, Jaden LaPointe was all over that one, bud. He, yeah, he definitely went by his man. His man never even had a chance to touch him. Well, Jaden LaPointe's got to be psyched. He spent so many years watching the game from the sidelines here with his father coaching. Turner's Falls High School, and now he gets to play on his home field. That's pretty exciting. Eye formation. Oh, flag down, and it's going to be, I do believe it might be on the defense here, but let's see what they call. Could be encroachment. And it looks like it's against the no, Bulldogs. No, it's against the Bulldogs. I was wrong, because they, they let the play continue. So... I believe they declined the penalty, it looks like. I would. Now bring up third and a long way. Yeah, it looks like about 14, 15 yards. It's actually closer to 17 yards. Yeah, I was just going to say it's uh, third down and 17, yep. which means that they're definitely going to have to uh, come up with a decent play here. Tell you one thing I've noticed so far is the D line for Frontier has been very explosive, very fast. All right, same formation, offset eye, one wide out on the near side, fumble on the snap, and who got it? Frontier has picked up the ball. Yep. Turnover, Frontiers, or so for Franklin County rather than Frontier now. We'll take over deep in Franklin County territory. Looks like that was covered by number 63 of Frontier. Cody Camp. So Cody Camp did a nice job being able to pick up that fumble. And now Frontier with really good field position right now, Chris, as they have the ball first down and 10 here at the 30. And they only have, actually, this is. The, the, the end zone is the 10 yard line. So this is oh, that's true. very, very deep. Yes, because we only have to go to the 10. So honestly, they're only about 17 yards away from scoring their second touchdown. First and 10 for the Frontier Red Hawk. Kiwis, split backs. Now two wide outs on the near side. Sort of modified double wing now. 
Handoff goes around end. And taken down. That was Brody, Brody Whittle, I believe, on the carry. Yeah, nice job right there by Brody Whittle. And nice tackle by the Bulldogs. He did get three on that one, though, Chris. So yep. it'll bring up a second down and seven for Frontier. I like the way that play developed. The, the lineman pulled to the right and it gave him a little bit of an outside option. And the end for, front, uh, for Franklin County picked up uh, the tackle, which was a good play. Exactly. One thing I have noticed about this Frontier team is they may not be big, but they're very fast. Very, very quick. It's like the same play. Yep. Let's whittle again. Down the right sidelines, and I think he tackled him inbound, so the clock continues to roll. Yep. And a really nice job right there. Good blocking by Frontier as well, especially over there on the right side. And that's exactly where they are going with the last two carries were also ran, ran to the right side both times. And Whittle definitely has been able to do well. And now it's a first down and goal for Frontier. And they're just about in. They're only uh, probably at the three yard. Yeah, line. it looks like they're about at the modified three because they're playing on an 80 yard field. Same setup, shotgun formation. Whoa, high snap. Quarterback be able to pick it up, and it's going to be a broken play. He evades a tackle, gets around, and gets in for the touchdown. What a play. Hey, nice job right there by number 12. The quarterback is Ty Skrosky, and he ends up scoring another touchdown. So two for him here today. Well, you mentioned that speed, and that ball was just over his head, but he was able to turn around, pick it up, and took off down that sideline, nobody could really catch him. Well, a quick two touchdowns right here for Frontier. And they're in pretty good shape here. Going for the two point conversion. Two point conversion upcoming, so this could really put Frontier up by two full touchdowns here, two full scores. Inside handoff through the middle. Oh, nice job right there by conversion. Whittle. He ends up getting the two-point conversion. And all of a sudden, Frontier with a 14-0 lead very early in this one. So come back up the field with the score. Frontier 14, the Franklin County Bulldog Pee Wee's nothing. You're watching Pee Wee Football on Frontier Community Access Television. I guess uh, we just found out something here, Chris. What? That, um, they get one point for a run in and two for a pass. Okay, I that's did not a run. know that. I didn't know okay. that either. Yep. So that's basically a 13 nothing. Okay, so that's good to know. It is good to know. So now the, the Franklin County Bulldogs will start off at their own 35. Somebody, so, somebody wants to be noticed. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the Tyler Skrosky fan club <laughs> in, in celebration of the two touchdowns he's already scored. That's good. I like that. Well, the Bulldogs need to be able to get some kind of offensive movement here. They really struggled on that first series. Let's see what happens here in the second series. High right, formation again. One man on the right slot and a one white wide out on the right side. And again, great penetration by the Frontier D. Wow, great job right there by Frontier. They have really done a great job at swarming that ball. And not only that, but their offense looked pretty good too. Pee Wee team looks very talented. That, for front, frontier. that frontier line is really, really good. I mean, they've, they've been in the backfield in pretty much every single snap for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and if you look at them, they're all really good sized kids, too. And I think that they've been able to do a nice job being able to make their way against the offensive line here of the Bulldogs. That's a loss of five, so it's second and 15 for Franklin County. Pee Wee's trying to get something going here. And you roll out to the right. Good pursuit by Frontier. Oh, oh. what a pop oh, right mommy. there by number 63. Cody Camp with a beautiful stuff. You know, you, you see pops like that usually in high school football. Yeah. That was quite the pop in a Pee Wee football game right here. Get the number of that train. Wow. Yikes. That was a beautiful tackle right there by camp. So that's a loss of another four, so it's gonna be 
It looks like third and 19. So not the start the Franklin County Bulldogs wanted to see. Looked like a pretty promising play, the quarterback rolling out, but just too much pursuit by that frontier defense. Well, hopefully Bashaw will be able to find a way to be able to throw the ball here. Flag on the play. Another fumble. fumble. And it looks like recovered by, what are they saying, that the ball was already down? The flag was thrown as the play was developing. Oh, and it was against Frontier. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because it looked, what usually when that happens in a play, gets, the flag gets thrown and the play continues, it's usually against the defense. So Absolutely. Break, break for the Bulldogs here. Yes, because they're having trouble holding on to the ball here, too. So third down now and 15 again, or 14 actually. And the ball spotted at the 30, about the 32 yard line. I want everyone to know that they do running time here. That's how they do it for these kids. It's just a running time. You couldn't have picked a better day weather-wise. Oh, this one. beautiful. And oh, they, wow. <laughs> Poor Bashaw, he's sitting there trying to give the ball to one of his backs. And of course the back, unfortunately, is running away from him. And <laughs> no, really, no, I, mean, I just was, feel was so bad what because I, what he's I like it. running, he literally was running after his own player to give him the ball. No, it was a, I mean, it was a draw poor. play, but the, but the draw never happened. <laughs> yeah, the draw. The guy just the draw, kind of stood there. Honestly, he made his own draw. He draw <laughs> his way over to the, to the back to be able to give him the ball. I mean, that was just, now talk about a kid who's listening to the coach, right? Exactly. Get the ball to the kid. Okay, so he's running after the kid to give him the ball. I mean, but now you have, the, it looks like they, they're spotting the ball outside the around the 43. And I'm pretty sure there was a flag on that play. And the Bulldogs appear to have the ball back. So that broken play ended up being a, a break or is it going the other way? No, no you know what it was, Chris, is um, I think that was the end of the quarter. And, That's uh, right, it's running time. There yeah, because it's running time. So I think at the end of the quarter, they ended up adjusting the ball. So now we're into the second quarter already. So at the end of one quarter, it's 13-0 uh, Frontier. Right. And that's because of the rule that they have now that if they throw a pass on the extra point conversion, it's worth two. Right. And then if they run it in, it's only worth one. All right, so Frontier has the ball. Moving this time right to left. Fumbled snap, quarterback put his knee down. That's so. all it was right there. I mean, if he literally was able to pick up that ball cleanly, he was able to adjust and move the ball. But unfortunately, he ended up putting his knee down and they run the college roll, you know, so. So that's gonna be no real loss on the play, maybe a half a yard. While we have a moment, we wanna mention, if you wanna get up to date on all the local sports, all the local high school sports, Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. You can watch it on GCTV and also the GCTV Facebook page and on FCAT. We run it as often as we can during the high school season to keep everybody updated on what's going on with the local sports. Well, it's a great thing that I get to be able to do. Can't believe it, Chris. We're working on three and a half years now. Yep, and it's and it's getting and, and the thing is, it's building. That's the thing. Ah, uh, thank you. It's people, a lot of fun. People uh, really depend on that show to get caught up on everything going on. It's not just one town; it's a county-wide thing. So, yep. And the nice the thing is, really is that with it. school choice, you have a lot of kids from different communities that are going to different schools. So there's a lot of kids that are from other towns that are going to Frontier. And you know, when you have a chance to be able to uh, carry those games for the folks that are viewing down in your area, you know, there's also people that are up here too because their kids go to that school too. And GCTV is going to have a full slate of games this year, and so will FCAT, and we'll be combining forces on a couple of those games. So look forward to look that. For that. So third down and nine. That last play again was a bit of a broken play. They got a yard forward momentum, and a pitch for a counter run. <laughs> Oh, what a job. What speed. Oh, and he got oh. caught by an open field tackle. But a nice little run there by the tailback who caught it on a counter run, took off down the left sideline. I'm trying to get a number on him. Number 11. Preston Patrizzi Richmond. Yeah, nice job right there by Preston. Took the little pitch and just took yeah. off. And boy, what a nice tackle right there by Deshaun Carter. Number 25, he really saved that. He saved the touchdown. Because I'll tell you right now, he saved the touchdown because he would have easily 
was able to get in with the speed that Preston had. Nice job right there by Mr. Richmond. He got a nice little opportunity to be able to get some open field opportunity to run. And boy, he had those little feet moving. The Hawks have a real chance to blow it open here. First down, just outside the 25 yard line. Double wing formation again. And inside give, oh, let's say fake the handoff. That's a little bit of a cross buck there. And wow, that was pretty good. That even fooled me. It did. <laughs> it looked like it was going to be a straight fullback blast, and I think he turned and did a cross buck instead. So he gained, gained three on that one. So right now we've got second down and seven here for Frontier. And they're not far away from getting their third touchdown here, Chris. Here in the second quarter. Second down, about seven. Same formation. But snap got dropped, but the quarterback was able to push up ahead and get probably three yards. Oh, nice job right there. A little bit of problems here with the exchange. Of course, that's all part of the inexperience of these young kids as they're learning. You know, it takes a long time for someone to be able to learn how to be able to catch a snap especially at this young age. So these kids are just going to have to keep learning as they practice each and every week. They're only going to get better as the season goes on. Exactly. Remember, this is week number two of an early season for both Frontier and the Bulldogs. So third down and about four. Again, humbled snap, but they're able to push it ahead, and they may have a first down. Probably got past the first down yet, Marco. Let's see. Yeah, I think he did. I think he got in. I think he just made it. Oh, they're saying fourth down and wow. literally a half a yard here. Interesting spot. I thought he got it, but yep. so they'll go for it, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Two touchdown lead and uh, fourth and short. Number four. I'll tell you right now, this is where the Bulldogs can be able to really get a big stop that they need in this game. This could be a big momentum boost for their team if they can be able to stop Frontier right here. Another fumble snap, so they just Oh, stopped. and I think the Bulldogs ended up, yep, they got the ball as well on the recovery. So, big defensive stop for the Franklin County Bulldogs if they get the ball back. Yeah, and a nice job right there by number 20. He ended up being able to pick up the ball. Fortunately, I don't see a number 20 on our roster here. But a nice job done by that young man. So it's first down going the other way for the Franklin County Bulldogs, who are trail 13-0 here in the second quarter of this peewee matchup. We have the juniors to follow from Bordeaux Field and Turner's Falls. Now last year we played at Frontier, and so this year the Franklin County Bulldogs are hosting this showdown doubleheader. Yeah, and with the opportunity of them having the open field here at Bordeaux Field, they get to have all their home games here in Turner's Falls throughout the season. So if you're interested in being able to catch some Bulldogs football. You can enjoy watching them here at Turner's on their home games. They do have their own Facebook page as well if you want to get information about that. And also Frontier also has a nice Facebook page and they play their games right down there behind Frontier Regional High School at their football field. So if you want to be able to catch these young men and they even have some ladies that are playing too, you can enjoy watching them. They play on Sundays and it just depends on whether they're home or on the road. You can find that information out by going to their Facebook pages. There won't be that many high school games played on this field this year, unfortunately, but there will be a Booster Day game played uh, later on this season for here in Turner's Falls involving the Mohawk program that the Turner's Falls players are playing for this year. Which I think is going to end up being a huge crowd, Chris. That's going to be a big night. Booster Day here on October 4th for that one with Mohawk taking on the Cantec. High formation again, and they're rolling out. Oh, nice job. Nice keeper. 
And he got picked up a couple of yards on that one to yeah, the quarterback. Well, let me tell you right now, good hustle right there by number 39. That was Bodie Burke. Bodie Burke. Yeah, boy, Bodie, good speed. Very athletic kid, too. I tell you right now, their father, Jack Burke, has always been a very good athlete himself. And uh, let me tell you, these young boys, him and his brother, they uh, definitely have a dad who may be a little on the older side, and we love you, Berkey. <laughs> but uh, let me tell you right now, he's got more spunk than 90% of us, let me tell you. And uh, very athletic dad, and he's very involved with his kids. And uh, I just want to say that it's wonderful to see a guy like Jackie Burke give so much back to the community that he does with these young kids. Picked up seven on that play, second and three for the Franklin County Bulldogs. And they're going to roll out. First pass of the game. Pass over the middle. Incomplete. Very nearly intercepted. Yep. As the Frontier Safety would love to have that one back. Holding his hands. Might have jammed a finger on that one. But good defensive yeah. play there by number 25. And he's going to come off. So third down and three. Unfortunately, we have a couple of uh, shirt jerseys that are a little different than the paperwork that we were given here. So we're doing the best we can with what we have. And, uh, and by the way, it happens at the high school level all the time, especially in yeah. the early season. So we're not going to yeah. bust anybody's chops too much. But it is frustrating because <laughs> right. we want to make sure we get the names on the air as much as possible. Right. We want to be able to mention the kids. And, you know, the parents sit there saying, well, how come they didn't mention my kid's name? Well, unfortunately, we don't know. That shot back at it. Oh, oh no. big pursuit uh -oh. right there. Boy, I'll tell you, that kid is a really good ball player. Cody Camp, he's a really good athlete. Yeah, he is, he's been defensively the monster. Him and uh, and uh, our friend Jayden LaPointe, LaPointe, Jayden exactly. LaPointe, exactly. Yeah. They were both in the, in the backfield. They've, Frontier's been in the backfield, I think, the Frontier line more than uh, than the, the uh, Bulldogs have. I mean, just really, really good. Now I see, looks like we have a penalty. I guess looks like so. it's a pretty serious personal, penalty. Personal foul. I wonder if was it was it too hard of a tackle or I don't know. A face mask? I didn't see anything um, mentioned by the officials. They didn't. Well, they probably don't really care because they're not really thinking about us up here in the booth, Chris. Right. They're not giving us any kind of indication of what happened. So. Well, obviously, it was a serious infraction because the Bulldogs now have a fresh set of downs uh, just inside their own forty. They were pinned back inside the 15 before, so that was a big one. Yeah, but I don't understand um, unless they're, unless, oh, they moved the ball back. All right, so the Frontier, Frontier's taking over on. Uh, I'm confused. I am too. Are there, it looks like a punt formation for the Bulldogs. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, what a tackle right there by number 51 from the Bulldogs. Good penetration, that was Tavon Page. Wow, he totally took that frontier player and knocked him to the ground really quick. No gain on the play, that'll bring up second down, actually about a loss of about a half yard. The ball's now out past the 40, it's frontier on offense. And the Bulldogs have one guy back as a free safety, which is why I thought he was punting. Yeah. I haven't seen Frontier even think about throwing the ball yet, and if I was one of the Bulldogs coaches, I'd have him pinch up a little bit closer. Good low snap, hand off, and no gain again as the Bulldogs line held that one. And a nice job right there by the Bulldogs. Number 25, Deshaun Carter making the tackle on that play again. He's had a couple of tackles here in this one. So third down and 10. So the Frontier Red Hawks have been moving the ball at will, it seems like, in this game. But right now, they are stone cold stopped. But I'll tell you right now, they had third down and 10. And they ended up doing a sweep and ended up getting a 30-yard gain. 
on the last possession. Correct. So this is a very big opportunity for the Bulldogs. Fumble snap, pitch back. He's trying to get away and it's gonna be a sack in the backfield. Back up by the 46, loss of six on that one. Oh, nice job right there. By, looks like number 21, Chris, of the Bulldogs. And that is Braden Lucier. Yep. Nice job right there by Braden. And with that, it brings up a fourth down and long. And there was a penalty against Frontier. Must have been. Wow. They're way back here. Another personal foul. Well, so, maybe they're trying to let the kids know if they're grabbing a face mask or something yep. like that, that they got to understand that they can't do that. And this is where these big penalties come in. You know, I, I can't see I can't see it being any kind of a uh, unsportsmanlike thing. I think it was more like probably grabbing a face mask or something. Looks like fourth and 32. Wow. That's what it looks like. Or as, or as we used to say in the men's league when we had to walk 15 yards to our huddle, Cavs don't run on Sundays. That's what I used to say. <laughs> but uh, these guys got a lot more energy than we have. I would hope so. A uh, little timeout here by the Bulldogs. I think they're bringing in a new group of personnel here. Or what are they? Wait a minute here. These guys are messing with us Unless, unless it's the end of the half, although I don't know. Okay, the ball, oh, which is what we know. The ball is spotted at the 45-yard line of Franklin County. And they have the ball on offense now. Okay. Maybe they just elected not to punt. And if you that elect not it. to punt, Chris, see, I don't know a lot of the rules. I guess that's something that maybe we need to do a little better job of, of getting some information on for our next broadcast next year when we do the same thing for these two local teams. But I guess the, in the bigger kids, I guarantee you that they, they punt the ball. Sure. But for this age, it's pretty tough because they don't even know how to really snap the ball, Correct. you know? So I think that what happened, Chris, is that they elected to just say that they were going to punt the ball. Maybe they give them 20 yards or something, and they just move the ball. It. So, yeah. All right. That, that, makes that sense. totally makes sense. So Franklin County Bulldogs quarterback, Casey Burke. <laughs> I tell you. Adjusting his shoulder pads. <laughs> Gonna run out with the play. I love it. Also coming into the game is Julia Dallin Smith. All right, so here we go. First and 10 from the 45, best field position of the day for the Bulldogs. Nice job by the Bulldog cheerleaders. I've been able to hear them loud and clear down there. They've done an excellent job with the cheering, cheering on their team. All right. J.C. Burke brings up his guys to center. And a little bit of an offset eye formation. Coach getting the end set up there. Oh, what a tackle right there. Wow. Again, great penetration by Frontier. It's been that way all day. Yeah, nice job right there by number 53. And that drop play only works if the, if the line can hold the defending line steady. And in that case, there was no stopping these guys. That's a loss of five on the play. And Jordan Wetzel, Jordan Wetzel ended up having a nice tackle right there for Frontier. And big loss on the play. Second and 15 from the 40. Again, Frontier leads 13-0. Beautiful Sunday here in Turner's Falls. High formation again. And roll out, and it's going to be a sack again as Frontier is just, just winning the battle up front right now. Oh, they're totally dominating. Nice job right there by number 60, Benjamin Baker, nice job, Ben. Excellent job right there by him to be able to pick up the sack. With that, is that the end of the first 
first half? Yes, it is. So we'll take a break, yep. and the, Green, the Franklin County Bulldog Cheerleaders will entertain us now. You're listening to Pee Wee Football and watching Pee Wee Football on Frontier Community Access Network. Now we're ready to start the second half here at Gordo Field as the Frontier Red Hawks lead the Franklin County Bulldogs 13-0. Quick, almost like an onside kick. Two or three yard return and the Bulldogs will start off at their own 43. Very good field position here by the Bulldogs and they're looking to get on the scoreboard here. See what their offense can be able to get something going. That's the one thing they've been struggling with is they've been struggling on the offensive end. That's been one of their biggest problems. Really, if you think about it, after giving up that leadoff kickoff return and then that one touchdown that Frontier got offensively, they really have done a decent job, the Bulldogs, at being able to contain on the defensive end. But their offense has been really struggling here today. Both touchdowns scored by Tyler Skrosky of Frontier, number 12. And just to remind everybody, it is running time, and they do it all from the field, so we don't have any control over knowing how much time is left here. We also want you to know that if someone does score, they get one point for a run, and if they end up passing for a conversion, they get the two points. Another right formation set up for Franklin County. Rolling right, and getting back to about the original line of scrimmage. Is Mr. Burke. And it's going to be a, maybe a gain of one. Let's see what the spot is. I gave him two, it looks like. So second and eight. And Bodie Burke ends up getting two yards on that. Ball spotted at the 45. Again, they play an 80 yard field here. I think the biggest problem that the Bulldogs are having is that really good defensive line that Frontier has has been very talented and they've done a really great job being able to get in on the Bulldog carries, whoever's carrying the ball, they've been able to penetrate and be able to get there and that's why the Bulldogs are struggling right now on offense. Same set, offset eye and they're going to roll back and they're going to fire it downfield incomplete, nearly intercepted, the only one near it, close to it really was a Frontier Red Hawk defender. Well, two of the Frontier players that went in to try to really put their hands up to block that pass, they ended up colliding with each other because they did such a nice job getting to the quarterback. But Burke was able to release that pass, and it was incomplete, bringing up a third down and eight. Third and eight from the 45 for Franklin County. And again, the juniors play right after this one. And also want you to know that when we had a situation with a punt, um, at this age group, they don't do the punt. They usually just add 20 yards to it. And we had a chance to see that earlier in the first half as well. So a couple of different changes in the rules here with the younger kids, but we'll definitely see full um, regular football rules with the juniors. Oh, what a play right there again by the excellent defense of Frontier yeah. as they, another gang tackle here, Chris. Excellent it, job right it's there. Tough to run a draw play like that when the defensive line is in your face almost immediately. So that brings up fourth, and we're going to give the ball back to the Frontier Red Hawks. As again, that Red Hawk defense, the story of the uh, early second half here. Yeah, and just like that, they elected to what they would call punt, and that's why the ball has been moved. There you go, they got the ball now at their own 45 yard line. 
Excellent job defensively by Frontier's Jaden LaPointe and also by Camp. Them two have been dominating this game on the defensive end for Frontier. Another nice job here by the cheerleaders here with the Bulldogs. Um, don't see any cheerleaders on the other side though, Chris, from uh. Frontier. Not sure if they uh, don't make road games or not, but I would think, why not? Bring, yeah. bring, them, bring them along if they have a cheerleading squad down there. Now, um, hopefully they would be able to be a part of a great Sunday football. Double wing again. I have a trouble with that snap from center. And again, no gain on the play as a bit of a broken play there for Frontier. Yeah, and number 32 by the Bulldogs was able to get in there. He was one of the players that was able to get in. And unfortunately, I don't see a number 32 for the Bulldogs. One thing we can say, Chris, is that the numbers are a little bolder, as people will be able to see as you're viewing this one, folks. A little bolder on this Bulldog team than it is for the Red Hawks. Second down and 11. Inside handoff, and again, good pursuit by the Bulldogs. Yeah, another nice job right there. Great tackle. Let's see if I can get that young man. There it is. Number 25, he has been all day long. Deshaun Carter, the big guy in the middle, being able to make lots of tackles here for the Bulldogs here this afternoon. Gain of maybe one. That brings up third and 10. I was looking at this Frontier Juniors team and their kids are very big. I mean, very big. Now it, happened. it looked like someone was going in motion. Yeah. Was there a timeout call? No, it looks like they're going to call. Illegal procedure. Illegal procedure. Yep. That's a five-yard penalty back to the 40. And that'll bring up second down, second or third. I can't see from here. It'll be third down. Third down and 50. Third and 15. And by the way, Chris, no sleeping on a beautiful Sunday afternoon ah. here. <laughs> Third and 15. You, I can't believe, um, as I'm looking over to the other side here, how big those kids are for Frontier. They look like a full-blown full blown middle school team over there. And again, uh, same again, situation. Same thing. Well, Black. Coach, Black. Coach, Coach uh, James, you got to, there you go. Got to instruct the kids. There he's doing it on the field over there. Well, what's happened was yep. he was going in motion, but he crossed exactly. over the line. Exactly what, he, this is exactly what happened. You need to run straight across. You can't run over the line of scrimmage, and that's what happens. Right, so. and Coach James is explaining to him right now. He's looking at the young man, and he's saying, okay, we're going to try this one more time. <laughs> well, that's how you learn it. I mean, yep. it's, you know, the only way you learn is by making mistakes. Yeah, and game. I think it's great because that's why I like about the coaches being on the field. And even the defensive uh, coaches for the Bulldogs was telling the kids, get up tight. Split backs now. <laughs> oh, nice snap. Good long snap. It's going to be a quarterback keeper. Oh, and a nice tackle right there by Deshaun Carter. Yeah. He has had the game. That kid's yeah, that, really that done a nice a lot job. Over the years, I think. Yeah, he's done an excellent job right there for the Bulldogs here today on the defensive end. Right now, he's proven to be the big defensive star for the Bulldogs. And Camp and White and uh, LaPointe have been the big uh, defensive stoppers for Frontier. So fourth down, virtual punt. We'll put the ball back at midfield yep. for the Franklin County Bulldogs. I think that's a great thing. 20 yards, you know, you get a you get a 20-yard punt. It keeps the game moving. That snap though was pretty cool. <laughs> that was a good snap. That was a nice. That was a really nice snap right there. Uh, that was a shotgun. So.
So first down at midfield for the Franklin County Bulldogs. Yep. Side draw. Yeah, he picked up two. Well, that that's the first time the draw really worked. It has worked today for Franklin County. It worked pretty well. In fact, yeah, nice job right there. Not for that tackle. He would have gotten five or six more yards, I think. Yeah. And it looks like uh, Bergstrom ended up being the one with the carry there for the Bulldogs. And he picked up just about a yard and a half on that one, Chris. So we'll say that it's... Uh, and to be technical here, we'll just say it's second down and nine. Ball spotted just outside the 48. And again, running time. And the junior game is next. Oh, and there's a mistake Fumble. right there. That, oh, did they, did they call that an incomplete pass? I don't think so. It looks like a fumble. And uh, no, they 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 literally called that an incomplete pass. Or did they call it down at the with a knee down at the? That's what they had to have called. They had to have. They yeah. had to call the knee down because now instead of uh, second down where it was second down and nine, now it's third and ten. So they ended up calling the knee down. High formation again for the Bulldogs. They're gonna roll out, and Sakaru. Oh, another nice job right there by Frontier. And that time, it was a nice tackle by number 12, Ty Strosky. He got in there to make that tackle, and that will bring up another fourth down, which will be one of those virtual punts. And looks like Frontier is gonna take over again here. And they'll take over at about their own 40, 41? Yep, 41, exactly, yep. So they definitely go with the 20. First and 10 for the 41 for the Frontier. And we'll see what the Red Hawks bring to the table offensively. Well, like I said, I think that the Bulldogs defense has really been able to clamp down after the couple of quick scores that happened earlier in this game, Chris. The biggest problem is, is that the defense in Frontier has been excellent. And I'm gonna say, there, there's gonna be a lot of teams that are gonna struggle against that defense at the PV level. You're right. I think the teams that Frontier plays this year, they're gonna really struggle against those guys that are up front for Frontier. And that looks like an offside. It does. I don't see a flag, though. I'm surprised, because that was definite encroachment <laughs> by Frontier on that it looked one. looked like it. I mean, that should have been a free five yards for... Instead, it's a gain of two for Frontier. Second and set, second and eight. I would, have, I would have been calling it right now at uh, first down and 15. But uh, they let it go, and second down and, and eight. Once again, folks, want to let you know that Pee Wee um, football here and also the juniors, the Bulldogs play here at Bordo Field in Turner's Falls, and the Red Hawks, they play down at Frontier Regional High School on Sundays. Check their Facebook pages to be able to find out their schedules. Double wing set for the Red Hawks. Pitch back. And you run up the left side. Good oh, run. Another great tackle there by Carter. Really nice run, too, right there. Is that that little guy, Whittle, again? <laughs> no, it was uh, Preston Richmond. Nice run right there by Preston Richmond. But boy, he was caught easily by Deshaun Carter, who has really had a great game he has had a great on game. the defensive end for the Bulldogs. That brings up third and two from the 48. Can the Red Hawks grab a first down here. Woo! 
Single wing setup. Quick pitch back, fumble in the backfield. Oh! Is that recovered by Green? Look, the Bulldogs? Gonna, I think it I is. I think it is. Yep. Yes, fumble it is. recovery. Nice job. And the recovery on that play. Looks like it was made by Tavon Page. So Tavon Page was able to pick up the ball, and now the Bulldogs will have the ball. It's the dog ball at uh, the 44 of Frontier. So, yeah. can we see a score here, opportunity? Well, like I said, the biggest problem that the Bulldogs have faced here is the fact that that defensive line for Frontier has been very explosive. And if you look at how big those kids are for being Peewees, they really have an excellent defensive line for this Red Hawks program. First to 10 for Franklin County. Fronty has a couple of uh, kids playing deep safeties here. I wonder if they think of throw. And a sack. Wow, what a sack right there. Thrown down to the ground by number 52, Connor James. Connor got in there on that one, and that was a big loss right there for the Bulldogs. Matter of fact, Chris, that was a loss of six. That's gonna bring up a second down and 16 here for the Bulldogs and a team that's really having trouble being able to move the ball. Well, the penetration is just incredible by the defensive line of Frontier. I mean, they're really in the backfield on every play, it seems like. I know, I mean, this poor Bulldogs team really just doesn't have a chance to be able to make any kind of offensive plays. Ball spotted around the 49. And again, inside handoff. And he's able to break away from the tackle. Down the left sideline. Deshaun Carter. Touchdown. Deshaun Carter, the kid did it on the offensive end in the Greenfield. Bulldog crowd really pumped up here. That's a big, big play right there. That is the biggest play for the Bulldogs here this afternoon. Deshaun Carter. A 39-yard touchdown run. Oh, that was a really nice job by Carter and a nice cutback too, Chris. Had a couple of defenders right there in front of him and he was able to make that cutback and he made a beautiful run to the end zone. Nice play right there by Deshaun Carter. Definitely the MVP for the Bulldogs here this afternoon. Conversion attempt upcoming. Clock is rolling. You know, maybe you uh, keep Carter in the backfield here. Give him a chance to get the ball because he is just as big as some of those defensive players That's for right. Frontier. Quarterback rolling out for the two point conversion. And he's taken down in the backfield, so no conversion attempt. And that will keep the score 13 to six. And a nice job right there by Brody Whittle. He was able to make the stop on that play. So Frontier will take over the ball here. He'll have the ball first and 10 at the 25 yard line. Or is that 35 yard line? That's right, 35. Uh, 35. 35, yep. yep. But front, uh, Franklin County is on the board thanks to the Sean Carter 39 yard run. So 13 to six. And again, it was good penetration by the Frontier line, but Deshaun just made a good move. Yeah, and like I said, this Bulldogs defense has done a really good job being able to hold Frontier from scoring. So now if they can get the ball back and get one more play like they just got, they could be right back in this game, Chris, and we could be sitting at either a tie or maybe if they even throw a pass, if they do score, the Bulldogs could end up being ahead in this one. But right now it's all about Frontier and what they can do on the offensive end. Double wing formation again for the Hawks. Yep, that was Whistle. Yep. 
movement by the offense. And it's going to be a five-yard penalty against Frontier. And make it first and 15. Big crowd here today, too, Chris. It's a yeah, beautiful it, day it's for football. It's a great day for football. And really a lot of is. people. A lot That's, of fans, especially right below us. A lot of fans here for this one. So the Hawks will try and get back into a rhythm here. Double wing formation again for Frontier. The pitch is going to go into the backfield. Drop for a second. Pick back up and a run up the left side around the corner. And finally oh. brought down about the 41 yard line. Wow, what a hit. Oh, nice hit right there. Who's that little guy? Trying to look, number 20? 20 for the Bulldogs, Chris, it looks like. We don't have a 20 on our roster. Oh, man, that's too bad, because that was a beautiful, beautiful play. Took him down at about the 37. Yeah. Or bring up second and about eight from the 37. So it's a seven yard game. Double wing again. Ah, another More movement. movement. Yep. And that's too bad because after a nice play like they just had to be able to get those yards that they lost back, now they just lost another five. So that's going to bring Frontier back to second down and 13. Yep. Second and 13 from about the 33. Oh, what a cutback right there. Nice cutback down the sideline. They're not going to get him, I don't think. He's gone. Touchdown. What a play right there. I need a number. I'm going to follow this kid all the way up to see if I can get that number, Chris. It was a great run down the left sideline. In for the score. It makes it 19-6. to six. It's number 12, Skrosky. Ty Skrosky again. Ty Skrosky with another fantastic run for Frontier. Wow, that kid's got some speed, Chris. Yes. You know, that defender from the Bulldogs, he was doing everything he could to try to catch up, and then he made that last dive. It just wasn't enough. And that right there was a... 57 yards. That was a big play right there for Frontier. And that was one touchdown that they needed as the Bulldogs were knocking at the door. A little conversion attempt upcoming. We're going to pass, looking for the extra point, and no incomplete. Now keep the score 19-6 in favor of Frontier. All three touchdowns scored by Ty Skrosky. Well, I was taking a look at both teams here that are coming up for the juniors, and I will say that size is a huge difference between the Bulldogs and Frontier in this next contest. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here, folks, when you see this Frontier team come out for the second game that we will be doing after we get done with this Pee Wee's game here today. Once again, I just want to say thank you to Chris Collins, also to the Eck, and also to Megan Self for being able to make the trip here to be able to enjoy this wonderful game that we were able to do last year between these two teams. They are the two local teams for youth football. They're in the Suburban League, Chris. And it's nice that we're able to be here on a beautiful Sunday where Greenfield Bulldogs football is held here at Turner's Falls High School. And want to remind everybody that if you want to catch some Frontier, you can. And you can enjoy those games over at Frontier Regional. They play right at the Varsity Field on home games or on Sunday. Check out their Facebook page. First and 10 from 35 for the Bulldogs. And again, the Frontier line is in the backfield almost immediately. And they're going to give it to them. They got a fumble on the play. So now Frontier doing what they've done best all throughout this game, playing great defense. And I think that might be the game. It is. 
Yep, that's it. Final score, Frontier defeats the Franklin County Bulldogs by a count of 19 to six. Big tune, we have a junior game upcoming here on Frontier Community Access Television.